welcome everyone to the Wild Rivers Film News Podcast, a new show from the Wild Rivers Film Festival. And we are going to be talking about all things cinema in our area, including some film discussions. Coming up, we're going to be having a talk on the short film The Gemini Project. But first, I'm Kat Liddell. And I'm Amanda Whittemore. And we are your hosts. And as this is the first show, um, we want to let you know that we will be having the occasional guest host come in. But you'll be hearing our voices on the airwaves uh, most of the time. And uh, if this is a new concept for you, if you haven't heard anything about the Wild Rivers Film Festival, uh, let's talk about some background on that. Founded in 2023, we had our inaugural film festival where we showed four dozen films over four days on four screens throughout Brookings. And it was a successful first run and first year in spite of a spate of wildfires that cut off traffic to the rest (laughs) of the world. We had tons of filmmakers come out. We had uh, a lot of very enthusiastic people enjoying all the cinema that we had on offer, like indie cinema, short films, documentaries, feature films. And it went so well. Well, we're going to keep on doing it. Our second one is coming up in August of 2024. And we're going to be keeping this going, and we're so excited to be getting established in the community. Now, before we dive into our film discussions and talk about all things cinema happening in the area, uh, let's talk a little bit about us, um, starting with Amanda. Where, uh, where did you start getting passionate about film? What's your background in uh, film appreciation or film festivals? Film festivals, film appreciation, all this yummy goodness. Yes, uh, believe it or not, I was born into it. I was born in Las Vegas. Everywhere you go, there's a camera. Every single eyelash, every hand movement is recorded and you want to be seen. So we were always on. And then Mm. we talk about the pit bosses and we talk about reviewing the tapes. Then in high school, we get into editing different formats. And it's just always been a passion of mine to Mm. record the moment, have accountability not necessarily for fame and money and fortune, however, for responsibility. And mm-hmm. so that's kind of where it started with me. All right, great. Yeah, so it's kind of in your blood, as it were. <laughs> just, uh, <laughs> just a little bit, been doing this for, for most of your life. And um, as far as me, I, I really just enjoy cinema just as an aspect of the performing arts. Um, so I've lived here practically my entire life, and I've been involved in the local arts scene as um, primarily in theater since I was about 12 years old, I want to say. So about 18 years of that under my belt. Um, I got my degree in English from Bushnell University up in Eugene. Um, But really, the stage was the thing that kept calling me back for for my fun times. Um, My work by day as a librarian, but by night, uh, I'm making plays. And that stuff lends naturally to film. Of course, I appreciate film. So I have the joy of uh, serving as a secretary for the Wild Rivers Film Festival. And it has been such a wild ride. And it's been really cool to to get to meet filmmakers, um, invite them to come check out our area and share their films with us. And also check out our area for its beautiful, wonderful, unique natural beauty. Uh, We had some of our filmmakers just checking out this place like, looking to see if they wanted to do some scouting for film locations. And that that is awesome. That is such a great thing to be building up our community in that way. So, uh, Amanda, what, what kind of role have you been playing at the film festival? This film festival here in Brookings, I have been, first I signed up as ambassador mm-hmm. because that was just as it called me. I learned about it as it was being presented to the public. And I said, I must volunteer. I must participate in every way capable Mm -hmm. (laughs) to see that I am here and a part of it. And because I've participated in other film festivals, I I know the fun and I know how important it is in the world of film Mm -hmm. to be in the scene. Absolutely. Um, For for reference, um, in case there are any people who are really into cinema out here listening to the show, I certainly hope there are. Uh, What other film festivals have you helped out with in the past? With the Nevada City Wild and Scenic Film Festival, mm-hmm. that was the the big one. Awesome. And you recently uh, got to take a trip to help out with uh, Back East with a film festival over there. Where were you at? I did. The Orlando Film Festival. That was impressive. They've been doing it for over 18 years, and it was actually their 18th show. And consecutive action really grows a a really solid connection and you can see the difference and feel the difference with the filmmakers that show up 
Then we also went to the Sarasota Film Festival, Mm -hmm. which was... So different than all the others. Mm-hmm. Everyone seems to have like a, a different feel to it. Completely. Definitely, yeah. Depending on where you're at in the country, what kind of films they're featuring, uh, who you're going to go see, it's uh, a different vibe at every single one. And that's kind of what's cool about getting on the film festival circuit exactly. and seeing what's going on. And we're excited to add our vibe to the mix in future years. Well, in case you're wondering how to connect with the Wild Rivers Film Festival, if you haven't in the past and you're interested to see what's going on as we lead up into our second year as a festival, you can check us out on wildriversfilmfestival.com. You can find us on our Facebook page. We're the Wild Rivers Film Festival Verified page. And if you're one of those people that has Instagram, you can also connect with them on there. And hey, if you're just joining us, you are listening to Wild Rivers Film News, a new show from the Wild Rivers Film Festival talking about all things cinema in our area. I'm Kat Liddell. I'm here with Amanda. And we are going to get into a discussion we recently started doing doing film screenings at our film festival office in downtown Brookings. And we are located at 615 Checo Avenue next to Whimsical Griffin. We just started getting in on the second Saturday art walk. So on December 9th, we had a screening and a discussion about the Gemini Project, one of the most popular films from the Wild Rivers Film Festival from last year. We got to screen it for some people who didn't get a chance to see it. And it is an incredible little short film with very local roots. Um, It was made in part by none other than local local resident, well, not local resident anymore, but local roots, Matt McVeigh of the McVeigh family. He's been working as an actor and director for several years now. He's out in the uh, Atlanta area. And um, he made this incredible film. I'm going to turn it over to Amanda to talk more about what this wild film is about, because it threw me for a loop. I think you were a little more <laughs> grounded than I was in the experience. What was going on with the Gemini Project? It's it's quite an honor to be there present with the brother, Cameron McVeigh, who was able to give literally exact description of the entire creation of this short film mm-hmm. and talked about the importance of being able to create a short film versus a feature film how sometimes we don't have all that time to capture a whole two hours from somebody. Mm. We're right there directly with, you know, I think it's 15, 20 minutes is the length of the Gemini. Yeah, about 20 minutes long, 20 if I minutes. remember right. Yeah, that's not not even close to a feature film, but there's so much story gets packed into it. it yeah. they, they, they filled it with mm-hmm. exactly, like, it feels like you watched the entire movie. Mm-hmm. And it didn't feel like a trailer. It feels like a real film. You get into it. And mm-hmm. it's about... The, well, it's debatable. He 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 made it that way, elusive for a reason. That mm-hmm. there's possibilities of all these options. There's these two brothers. It is filmed here in this area. Mm-hmm. There is it's up the Chetco River, mm-hmm. and you do have to get in this cable car mm-hmm. because of the river height and cross over the cable car. Mm-hmm. Then you go up the property. And it's about working. They they brought in some Alaskan wolves, which is the highest type of a breed that you can get. Mm-hmm. It's almost 80 or 90 percent wolf. Mm-hmm. And they're very wild. Mm-hmm. And they had to stay on leashes the whole time. Even though it looks like they're not on leashes, they actually had a certain uh, artistic way of mm-hmm. editing that and making it look real. A little movie magic, yeah. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they ha- the the film happens. It's it's so in depth and it's so quick and and it really makes you think. It gives you so many different. There could be fifteen answers to this one scene, mm-hmm. and he did that intentionally to allow the mind to to think. Okay, okay. And so, like, I guess like when I was sitting there, I was like, am I am I thinking about this in the right way? So, like, my understanding of the film is like, you know, this this guy is. At first, I thought they were brothers. Mm-hmm. Um, this this guy goes out into the out into the wilderness, out to this remote cabin. First, I thought he's going to visit his twin brother. Um, he finds his brother chopping wood. They have a they have some conversations. They talk about this uh, disease that they both have that one is a is a, just a carrier for, and the other one is actually actually dying from. Um, the disease is not named. It's uh it's very mysterious, but. Um, Things like seem to get tenser and tenser over the course of like just a few minutes between the brothers without a whole lot even being said. And then eventually the twin brother, uh, 
the twin brother kills the other brother, I guess, like from a you know, spoiler perspective. But you have to know, like, this guy dies. He assumes his identity and he takes off a carrier for this disease. And you're like, OK, well, like, what is this disease that's about to get unleashed on the on the world? Exactly. And then at the end, there's this this really wild twist where you're wondering, like, is this person delusional? Is this disease already out there? Like, what is even happening here? But it, it gets you kind of like terrified for what's going to happen when this brother actually leaves quarantine, as it were, and goes out into society. Exactly. So, mm-hmm. Yeah, he he has. So that's very true. He was saying that that him going out because he said he's going he, without too much, but mm-hmm. he he is going in the other one's place. Mm-hmm. And that one who was just killed mm-hmm. on his death breath was saying that, you know, well, you're going to contaminate the world. And, mm-hmm. and it's however he says is that um, it's so it's so gifted to the point where you. Oh, I don't. I have, It's so difficult to say it without giving away the whole film for those yeah. who do want to see the Gemini Project. Mm-hmm. And it is it is definitely um, as a local, it is something that it's like it's worth seeing, like no matter what your your view is on short films, how you feel about like thrillers or anything else like genre notwithstanding. There's so much local ri- richness that gets brought to this movie from the location where they're up the Cheka River where they're um, coming in on shots of, like, burn scars from the Checo bar fire that happened back in 2017. I mean, references to, to um, you know, mushroom foraging out here, mm-hmm. um, you know, just the uh, the salmon um, industry here and, mm-hmm. you know, just the, the local local food that, that can be foraged for and caught here. Um, and then delving even a little bit into into kind of the, the, the history of the area a little bit with the setting – um, and it was very evocative of an old timey feel because they they went with um, sh- with screening this film in black and white rather than in color. Mm-hmm. There's just so much beauty and richness to this film. No matter where you land on with the ending, it's um, it really is something that's beautiful to see. I think so. And the the level of commitment to get the film equipment from one side of the river, they had to hand cable car it all the way across the river. Mm-hmm. Not only that, they had to hand cable car the wolves mm-hmm. across the river. So that, and it's a small cable car, and Cameron was explaining how he actually had to put the wolves in the cage on the cable car, lay on top of them, and hand <laughs> crank all the way across the oh river. That would have been a sight to see, huh? <laughs> yeah, and that's what, you know, they wish they had more of that behind-the-scenes type of action mm-hmm. and those recordings, and they, they didn't get that. Mm-hmm. However, they did have a lot of drone footage, and they lost some of their drones throughout the fires. Oh, really? And somehow mm-hmm. some of the loggers were able to, fi- they found the drone and gave it to them. Oh, my God. And they actually were able to use some of the live fire footage yes yes i remember that shot of just like the woods burning and and just mm-hmm. the, the crazy raging heat from the flames even if you can't see the color of it it's it's still intense it's still <laughs> wild it's they did a great job catch capturing that that drone footage i just seeing the the footage of the cable car operating and realizing that there are still contraptions like that <laughs> up the river that you know there's X number of bridges where you can cross at. And if you need to cross, you need to figure something out. Even still to this day, we are in wilderness, man. Completely. And it's, it's amazing. It is an amazing thing to really think about. Well, um, you know, with these screenings that are happening at the Art Walk, um, how how was the vibe there? Like, you know, what was uh, what was the, the screening like? I, I unfortunately had to miss that one. But I mean, like, what what was it like just screening a film and having having people um, connected with and working on the production there to talk about what was going on? It, it felt it felt very full of life and very active and very alert and attended attended well. A lot of a- attention to the purpose. It was some many people were referred there. And they were all excited about being there because they they knew that they were invited, especially to this film screening. Mm-hmm. And so that was a really good vibe. And it felt really fun. Mm-hmm. Then, and, it, and it actually attracted a lot of... There was a filmmaker who from Santa Cruz just passing through on an art walk day. And no, she heard about it and just came in. And so, yeah, it's drawing mm-hmm. a lot of the proper attention and growing the vision that we are, you know, the seeds that are planted mm-hmm. here. Right. And it's like people always think that that filmmakers are just centered in L.A. They're centered in, in New York, but mostly L.A. because Hollywood. But but really like that, that's 
that's a stereotype that isn't necessarily true. And um, small festivals like ours, rural festivals like ours, really have the potential of attracting filmmakers from across the spectrum. And and even even more so, maybe even bringing out more rural filmmakers. You had the joy of connecting with some filmmakers that aren't too far away from us at the Orlando Film Festival. And yes. uh, and they're they're like a stone's throw away in in Josephine County, you know. Exactly, mm-hmm. and we they're fully invited to be here and participate with us. The, the when we all met and connected in Orlando, and mm-hmm. we're from the same teeny tiny little part of the world, it was such a sensation, mm-hmm. and it really lit their eyes with, oh my gosh, like we really we really can't. We're making these pieces for a reason. It really is hitting home. Mm-hmm. It really is fueling the the goals that they they have set for themselves. There's so many different avenues. You show up nine o'clock in the morning. You don't leave until two o'clock in the morning, <laughs> right? <laughs> because that is the real life of filmmaking. Mm-hmm. It's a twenty-four-seven gig, and um, you know you can dip in and out anytime you want. Self responsibility is most important. However, it's on. It's like it's like full packed. It's a full festival. You know when you go to those music festivals, you're there for four days. Mm-hmm. You don't go anywhere. Like you are on the whole time. And it's the <laughs> same thing with the film festival. Mm-hmm. It's a lot of action, a lot of new people, so much fun. And the connections that you make, make the connections that I've made, I still am very close with almost 80, 90 percent of all of them. And they're just genuine, real humans. You know, as much as we see different things behind the scenes or we think these things about them from in front of the film. Mm -hmm. Once you meet them and you're talking with them and you're getting to know them because you're part of VIP or you're part of the box office, you see them, you talk to them. They're the actors. They're the producers. You're like, wow, these are phenomenal people. Mm -hmm. Then you get to go in and watch their film. Mm -hmm. Then you're in tears and you have all this emotion. You're like, I cannot believe this human is so powerful and creative. And look at the work they did. Like, how did they do all this work? Mm -hmm. It's so intense. It's it's such a passionate course of action. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it is. It is incredible getting to meet filmmakers. It's incredible getting to meet actors like, you know, they're they're everyday people just like us. And it's fun to party with them. And then you get to see incredible art that they make. And what's not to love? Exactly. They are some of the hardest working people I've ever met in my life. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. It's really inspiring, really, too. like being able to to go to these places and figuring out what a small world you you live in and just being a network with with people who are just interested in in this corner of the world interested in making great film it's just it's been such a great year and it was so great to be able to kick that off with the gemini project well we're trying to do this uh just about every month every single art walk which is the second saturday from 3 to 6 p.m and um i don't know have you heard have they landed on on what they're planning on screening next at the next art walk i believe it's still a mystery it's they, still a mystery. they have some ideas they're tossing around to see mm-hmm. which one uh you know comes about on the screen <laughs> mm-hmm. well luckily we're recording regularly the plan here is to to be out here on the airwaves as much as humanly possible so we'll be announcing that as soon as we know and you can also follow along again on our facebook page wild rivers film festival verified page or checking out our website wildriversfilmfestival.com we're going to be putting the info out there as soon as we know Hey, if you're just joining us, I'm Kat Liddell here with Amanda. We're, uh, we are the co-hosts of the Wild Rivers Film News Podcast, a new show from the Wild Rivers Film Festival, talking about all things cinema related in our area. And Amanda, we have some stuff going on in the community. It's not just going to be our next uh, film festival coming up on um, in August of 2024. Like we mentioned, we're going to be doing art walks every second Saturday of the month with film screenings. Um, but also, too, um, do you have any any upcoming things that people should be aware of, not just related to the film festival, but just related to film, cinema, the performing arts in general in the uh, in the Wild Rivers area? You got anything for us on your plate? Well, one of the most exciting activities arising is not till June. Mm -hmm. However, it is a pretty important workshop. Mm -hmm. And it's for filmmakers, for those that are interested in learning about film, how to make a film, actual hands-on with equipment, 
all the things you could ever imagine of learning to create your own piece. Mm-hmm. And uh, and we are specifically, I believe, targeting uh, young and up and coming filmmakers, um, mm-hmm. people who who want to learn more about the industry. And what's the uh, what's the general um, age group that that we're looking for for people to be a part of this workshop? To my understanding, mm-hmm. it's pretty much high school mm-hmm. and college and. Uh, all ages, you know, as as far as, you know, from from high school and up, those that are able to hold the equipment, those that are able to understand the information that's coming to them mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. that are uh, able to produce mm-hmm. as as requested. All right. Yeah. And it's uh, so to, to be clear here, it's uh, it's not necessarily like it's not from an acting perspective. This is the form of the filmmakers perspective, all the things that go into creating a film and creating a finished project. And one of the cool things about this workshop is that when this product is finished, it is going to get screened at the film festival in August. So there's a chance for these uh, these young people to highlight all of the hard work that they put in and everything that they have learned. And that's going to be really, really cool. So stay tuned for more information about how to possibly get yourself or if uh, you're a parent listening or a grandparent listening, how to get your uh, teenage or college age child or grandchild involved because because uh, that is a really cool opportunity that you usually have to travel super, super far to get exactly. them involved in. That is for sure. It's right mm. here in town. They also yeah. are providing a screenwriting contest. Mm-hmm. Yep. We're in the works to start a screenwriting co- contest, and um, we're un- going to be announcing more information about that in the next month or two. But if you have um, always had a yearning to take a shot at writing a screenplay, or say you already have a script sitting in your back pocket, that's a, something that, that you've you've always wanted to say, like, hey, maybe I could... Maybe I could pitch this and get this produced. Um, keep an eye out for submissions for that. Uh, if we choose your script, we're gonna we're gonna look at uh, seeing how to create that and make it a film down the road. So, stay tuned for more information again from uh, Wild Rivers Film Festival on their Facebook page, Instagram account, or WildRiversFilmFestival.com for information about that. That is a really exciting opportunity. Um, I know on my end, I like talking about uh, not just, you know, the indie film circuit, um, but one of our, our screening locations, the Redwood Theater, uh, is they've been, a, they've been a great partner in the last year. Uh, I always love to tell people what's coming up at the Redwood Theater. And I know this week they are screening the Hunger Games Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes through December 14th. And then playing the next week is the film Wonka. And I just thought that was kind of funny oh, to me yes. because, OK, so, I mean, can we talk for just a second of course. <laughs> about all all of the, the the intellectual properties that have been coming out in films, like where it's just like based off of based off of books and comics in the last few mm-hmm. years. I just love when the literature gets adapted into film. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. Now I have to ask you, uh, which which one is your favorite Wonka movie? Um, was it the Gene Wilder version or the the more Burton esque version? Believe it or not, I'm um, more of the Gene Wilder. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, well, I don't know if that's such a controversial opinion. I don't know. Yeah. Like, I would say that's like the 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 r- regular opinion. You know, like I don't know if there's like hardcore Don- Johnny Depp fans out there, but Gene Wilder is always going to be the classic Wonka the, in my yes. mind. Yeah. I know this one's more of a more of an origin story, um, and and I know that it's not going to follow the Charlie and the Chocolate Factory <laughs> storyline. So, uh, since they are abandoning that storyline, I am interested to see how Timothy Chalamet does with the role. So, oh, yes. so I probably will end up checking that one out, even if I was like I was burned before by the Tim Burton version. <laughs> <laughs> right. From my own personal opinion, don't attack me if you love the the Johnny Depp version. <laughs> but um, yeah, that sounds like a nice sweet holiday film to to be uh, coming up there with the uh, with the holidays coming up at the Redwood Theater. And then I know also, too, um, down at one of our other partner screening locations, the Checo Library, which was the central for screening all things documentary related at our last film festival. And they're probably going to be a prominent screening location for documentaries again next year. Uh, so they've actually started doing monthly documentary screenings. The next one coming up at the Checo Library, located at 405 Alder Street in Brookings, is going to be Queen Victoria's Empire Part 1, Engines of Change. And Mm -hmm. this is part of a four-part series that was produced in 2001 by PBS. And it talks about uh, the early years of Victoria's Empire. And for more information about those screenings, they are totally 100% free. Um, So if you're a documentary buff, if you just like learning about new things, that's going on monthly. And you can find more information about them at Checo Library's Facebook page or at checolibrary.com. 
Well, Amanda, mm-hmm. it's been an exciting <laughs> first show. It's it's really cool that we're we're doing this and and we're not just you know just posting things out on Facebook. Like we're trying to reach people wherever they are, whether that's on the airwaves, whether that's in the podcast sphere. I mean, like. I, I don't know. I just I feel like the the options are limitless for the show. What are you excited about in the coming months for for what's possible with a with a podcast and radio show about the film festival? Absolutely. The the ability to reach people, of course, globally. However, it's on a different platform. It's a different sensation. A different feeling arises. Mm-hmm. A lot of us, you know, we don't get internet service in some areas of these hills, but we do get radio service, right. and so, <laughs> you know, there it's. It's a different technique and being able to talk about something, have the planet, have it grow, and then here we are doing it. And it's it's almost as exciting as getting to the workshop mm-hmm. to do the school, go through the workshop and create the film. And ha- it's just a whole piece and part of everything that we, we are doing, watching right. all of our goals become yeah. real. And for me, it feels like, too, like from that perspective, it's such a unifying thing. Like who who doesn't like like watching a film and then sitting down with their friends and talking about what they just witnessed? Exactly. You know, like unpacking everything, sharing their hot takes, whether like somebody who really, really loved it or somebody who really, really didn't like what totally. they saw. You know, everybody's yeah. got an opinion. And and so like that's one of the beauties of doing a film festival, too. You're seeing brand new things mm-hmm. that people have never seen before. Or may it's, never see. May never see. Yeah. <laughs> we're talking indie cinema here. And people get people get quite uh, they take risks. They get experimental with what they're bringing to the bringing to the film industry and what they're bringing to the film. And it's just a special experience. It really is. And you get to see things that aren't just big blockbusters. It's art pieces. You know, Completely. these are people's passion projects. And that's yes. the really cool thing about going to see a film. Festival. And as is Brookings, Oregon, to live here, you've got to be really passionate to stay in this zone, in this area, I feel from my personal experience. And the art is a huge part of that. And so this is another format, another course of, of all the fun stuff that we get to do. Absolutely. Well, hey, we're going to be coming back with more episodes. Um, but in the meantime, if you want to check out and get more information about the Wild Rivers Film Festival, again, you can find us on wildriversfilmfestival.org. If you want to get involved as a volunteer, you can visit us at our office when we're having events. We're located at 615 Checo Avenue in Brookings, right next to the Whimsical Griffin. If you see someone working in there, pop on in and say hi. Uh, you can also send an email directly to info at Wild Rivers Film Festival. Dot com. Um, if you want to get involved, we are still constantly always looking for volunteers. We've done things as uh, simple as as running the box office and selling passes uh, to being a, me, a part of me and Amanda's crew where we were running around making sure that all of our filmmakers were where they needed to be, having a good time and just feeling welcome in the community. So there is really work for everybody, no matter what your level of experience is with with film or promoting film. So please, please, if you love cinema, please get involved. Well, I believe that is a wrap for our first ever episode of this podcast, Wild Rivers Film News. It's been such a pleasure talking with you, Amanda. I'm excited to have more discussions about films coming up. Of course. Thank you, Kat. And we want to thank the Gemini Project for their work that they did and being part of this first screening here Mm -hmm. at the inauguration of the Art Walk that we have at second Saturdays here in Brookings with the Wild Rivers Film Festival. Mm-hmm, absolutely. And I also want to thank our producer, Tom Bozak, for, for helping us get this show recorded. Thank you so much, Tom, for all the work that you do. And uh, you can find us on KCIWLP 100.7 FM in Brookings. You can also find podcasts at KCIW.org. Thank you so much for joining us for Wild Rivers Film News, and we will see you at the movies. Yes, thank <laughs> Thank you.